what is CI-CD in the first place? Well, it's a method. It's a method to deliver value to the client rapidly by introducing automation in the stages of the application or system de development. And the main uh, concepts are CI, which is uh, continuous integration, CD, which means continuous delivery or continuous deployment. And those two are a little bit uh, different. The key difference being that continuous deployment is just running an application through automated pipeline and deploying it to the end system, while continuous delivery it means having the deployable ready, but not being delivered, not being deployed yet until a team or a user decides to do so. So uh, unlike uh, what uh, you probably expect, I will not be showing uh, AWS code pipeline and code, code build. Instead, because we don't have much time, it's only 45 minutes, we will rely on our on the knowledge that most people here already have, and that is of Azure DevOps. And we'll see how we can utilize Azure DevOps in order to create a CI CD pipeline uh, and do a CI CD uh, method on the AWS cloud. So let me share my document. So CI CD pipeline in general, it uh, looks usually looks something like this. We have a developer or developers committing code into a code repository, which can be local, it can be on the cloud, and that code commitment can initiate build, automated build process. That's the build pipeline, and that's the CI part of the whole process, where the different code changes are integrated into a build. And that build is basically going to create a deliverable, a package with all of the code and the necessary configurations for it to be deployed in the next stages. The next stages are release or deployment uh, stages where we can usually have a couple of different environments, dev staging or UAT user acceptance tests environment and production environment are the most common ones. And in this on this graph, we have deployment to dev, which is automated. During that deployment, we need to run automated tests. Those are very, very important in the whole CI CD concept because if we rely on manual user tests, then we are not fully utilizing CI CD methodology and we are not getting the full benefits. So after the tests are run and dev release is successful, the system should deploy to the staging environment next. It will also run tests. They can be same, they can be different tests. It can focus on different uh, areas. In general, I would usually put certain uh, user acceptance, acceptance tests here, which are different than development feature tests in the dev release. And then finally, after those are done, conditional deployment to production is uh, usually set up. What that means is that instead of automatically deploying to production environment, we actually require a user to approve of that. And that's usually one or more uh, uh, clients or senior uh, DevOps. So what we are going to do here in AWS now with this whole system, we will create three environments in the cloud. They can be on different accounts. For these, we will set them up all on the same environment. And we will just create Lambda demo uh, in this at this time. So we will create a serverless function from the Azure functions, but in AWS it's called Lambda. We will create a Lambda which will do some work. It will be deployed automatically into the and tested in development, staging, and production environments. Uh, 
Unfortunately, we don't have enough time to actually set up the other part that I wanted to show, which is serverless uh, all API and Lambda behind it. So the entire system. So what is what are the first things that we need? What are our prerequisites basically if we want to do this using Azure DevOps? Well, for the first part, we actually need we need uh, basically the AWS toolkit in our Visual Studio. So we'll uh, set that up. A moment. Okay. We'll set up our Visual Studio so that we can. Uh, uh, basically do AWS, uh, create AWS functions in it. The other thing that we need to do is set up the Azure DevOps as an environment and of course AWS Cloud. So that's going to be relatively easy. First, in the Azure DevOps, we will also add AWS Toolkit. You can do that using Marketplace. I already have it installed here. Moment. So AWS Toolkit for Azure DevOps, just as we have AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio. We set it up and that's about it there. Next, we also need a way for uh, Azure DevOps to communicate with AWS. So we will set up a user inside the AWS environment to and provide the credentials to Azure DevOps. I will show you here we have Azure DevOps user here. It's set up. I put it in a group called admin. Doesn't matter really. And I have security credentials here. Most basically access keys. So we can provide these access keys to Azure DevOps. So let's actually do that now. We will create a new project in the Azure DevOps. Let's call it a Summit AWS. It's going to be private project. I don't mind. And yeah, Agile basic. Oh, let's just go with basic here. It doesn't really matter. So we'll create a project. This will set up our repositories, of course, pipelines, artifacts. So we have all of this set up here. Now, basically, the first step is let's make sure that Azure DevOps, that this project can actually communicate with our AWS environment. So in the project settings under service connections, you can actually create a service connection. And as you can see, AWS is basically the top option. Why not? So next, it requires access key and secret access key. So let's create those. We'll just create a new access key. Unfortunately, as you can see, we only have two access keys that we can do. So let's make one inactive. And Delete access key ID. Excellent. And then we can create a new access key. This is the access key. Just put it here. Take the secret access key here. And of course, we give it a name. I like to call it AWS basically. So now we have a way to for uh, Azure DevOps to actually instruct and do stuff on the AWS. Next prerequisite is basically since we are working with uh, Lambdas, well, the Lambdas actually need to run under a role. It is a set of uh, permissions that the Lambda actually has. And I already have that created here. 
uh, say Lambda demo role. It has basic Lambda execution roles and VPC access execution roles needed in case we have set this up in the VPC. So nothing really uh, too difficult. Next step is we want to do a project, so we will set up a code repository. I like to add a git ignore right away from the start. Initialize and now we have this repository here for our code. And we will take this and we will put this in the Visual Studio. Let me give me a moment to switch to Visual Studio. So now we are here. We will clone the repository. All of this is the basic stuff that most people here already do. I won't say on a daily basis, but yes. Summit AWS. And we are cloning the repository. We will create an application, a Lambda. So let's create a project here. And we will use Lambda project with tests. I always use the one with tests. Next, we'll call it is summit aws dot uh, lambda to upper this lambda is going to take uh, well this creating first is we are going to create an empty basically hello world function that's an equivalent of uh, i don't know full going into a bar and looking around and saying hello world so while this is creating, let's talk about what this uh, function is going to do. What we want it to do is, let's take a dictionary as an input and let's uh, modify it so that all of the values inside of that dictionary are converted to uppercase. And let's return that dictionary back. So it's extremely, extremely simple I don't know why we need uh, separate uh, Lambda functions for that, but hey, it's in the architectural requirements and documentation, so we need to implement that. You know, those architects. So first thing first, let's uh, say what we actually need here. Let's say our input uh, dictionary is going to be a string string dictionary and it's going to take e1 and sorry, one and the value one and let's add one more so it's going to say two and it's going to say no2 so this is our input dictionary and our expected result should of course be values converted to uppercase one and no and that's our expected result and then of course we are calling our uh, function here to test it with the correct input and we are expecting a as an output and of course we need to verify that the output is correct now to do that here it's easy we'll just verify that all elements of the output dictionary satisfy uh, k assertion of equals where the expected value we know where it is expected result of the pair key and the re, the value that we got it is basically pair dot value so this is our test function unfortunately if you try it it's not going to compile 
not going to compile means that something needs to be fixed. So in the function, we will fix our signature of the function. It's going to be an input input, and the same is going to be for an output. And it returns null. Great. Now it's compiling. Excellent. Wonderful. Let's see. This should work now, right? You run it and it works and it passes, right? Oh, it didn't pass. OK, so uh, we need to make sure that it's actually passing. So let's implement that. Yeah, easy way. We'll just convert the input to a dictionary. Yeah, it's a dictionary, but we'll just convert it back to the dictionary. And we'll say that the uh, key doesn't change. And the value. value is going to convert to upper. So let's build this now and see. OK, let's run it. And here, there we go. We have it function and it's passing and we. It should work great. Now let's uh, put it in the cloud. Let's put it in the AWS. Well, we could, of course, go through here and publish the AWS Lambda. But that's not CI, CI or CD. What we want to do is to create a pipeline that will take this code, whatever it here is. Once we push it into the repository, it's going to build it. It's going to prepare a Lambda deployment. And it's going to later at the stages, it's going to put it in the AWS. So in other words, we need to create something like this. This is a very generic CI uh, pipeline, a build pipeline. Usually it takes committed code and takes it from the source repository, pulls it in, prepares the build environment, a step that can exist, doesn't have to be. In this case, probably not, but usually you might need, for example, to install uh, NuGet uh, Envir, uh, NuGet tools, or npm, or different kind of tools. And the reason for that is you want your build environment to be as much sandboxed, separated from the rest as possible. So it's each one is in its own sandbox, and each one is being created whenever you actually run this pipeline. So that two different uh, uh, builds do not impact each other because one needs a version of NuGet uh, below five, the other one needs a NuGet tool above five. Okay, so prepare the build environment, build package. This is our basically build process, and then test it. Testing is really important. Usually in build uh, pipelines, we are just running unit tests. It doesn't have to be just unit tests. And then we prepare the package. We do whatever else is needed other than having DLLs. And then we store that package as an artifact. As an artifact into the artifacts uh, on in the Azure DevOps. And that's done with the build pipeline. This build pipeline, of course, can be extended to do some uh, different uh, source analysis like uh, Sonar Cube. It can check uh, different uh, code coverages, but let's keep it simple at this time. So let's create something like this. It should be pretty easy, I hope. Let's see. Hmm. Misclick. Okay. So here we are. We don't have any code yet here, but we are already going to start with pipelines. Of course, uh, this pipeline is using the branch main. So we'll set up our build to run on the main branch, the easiest case possible. So we'll create a new pipeline. And I like to do something like start from the scratch. I don't like templates, so I'll just create a use this and create an empty one. Okay, 
where is our code? It's this project, this repository, this branch in Azure DevOps. Yes, excellent. And that's about it. That's what we have here. We have a trigger that's going to come from here. We'll enable it and we'll say main is the our master branch. And then here we pull the source and then we run the job. What is our job? Well, our job is to build whatever we need to build. So that's the start. We, let's leave this summit AWS CI. It sounds really good. So if you remember, like we had here, prepare the build environment, build package, test package, prepare the package, store the package. We don't have to prepare the build environment. It's an extremely simple project. Everything is already set up. We don't have really have any special dependencies for the build environment. So let's build the package. And since the AWS uh, Lambda functions are .NET Core, well, we'll just use .NET Core. And we'll add a couple of these. And the first step is, of course, to build. What are we going to build? Well, uh, the most common way is to say, let's build everything, all projects in the solution. And that's about it. We don't need arguments. There are cases when we create, we do a .NET restore as a separate task, uh, or even NuGet restore as a separate task, and then we have uh, no restore here, but in this case, completely unnecessary. So we are building the a code, the DLL, and then we are going to run the tests. Now the tests are here. Summit AWS Lambda 2 per dot tests. So to keep it simple, we'll just run tests and we'll say, I want to run all all test projects. So that's about that. We want to run all test projects, but uh, there is no need to really build them again. So no build. We don't really need that. And since we are going to publish test results and code coverage, I like to use a specific logger type, which is called TRX here. So very simple arguments. We'll publish the test results code coverage, and that's about it. We have code build, code test. Let's save this, and let's actually try this. Do we want to try this, or should we continue? Yeah, let's try this. Let's see how it's going to work. Is it going to actually trigger on commit, and is it actually going to build anything? So here we are. Let's push the changes. We are going to say. Yeah, commit and push. Hopefully this works. Hmm. We pushed it. Pipelines. Do we have any runs? See, is it here? Yes, it is. Pipelines. Hmm. No runs yet. Let's see. Main, advanced, run. I, this is the worst part of this job waiting.
we are building. I don't, I don't think we have enough a lot of time to weigh this. So while this is building, let's uh, continue editing our pipeline here. Oops, not the new one. OK, so we will continue editing. While this is working, so next step is to actually implement. This prepare the package and store package as an artifact step. That's going to be easy, barely an inconvenience. OK, so we'll add a couple of new tasks that we got with the AWS toolkit. If you look at here, we have AWS and we have a lot of tasks here. We have task for managing cloud formation, which is extremely useful to manage, manage infrastructure. We have Lambda invoke functions, Lambda deploy, secret managers. We have a lot of these extremely, extremely useful. In this case, we'll use AWS Lambda Net Core package, which is used for build package deploy Lambda functions. So let's add that one. And here is the first part that we are actually using those set, set up credentials. We're going to say AWS credentials. We'll, we are not going to deploy Netcore to Lambda, but prepare deployment package. And we'll do that in US East one region. You don't have to specify region, I just like it, and we'll only create a deployment package. With this single function, you can create a package and deploy it in a single step, but for the proper CI CD pipeline, we're preparing the package first and then deploying to different environments in phases, in stages. So we are creating deployment package only, and where in we are specifying where are we going to put this deployment package. Now, I like to put it uh, in a separate folder uh, in the build. So build artifact staging directory, that's the just, just common directory for all, all of this stage, for the entire stage. And inside of that, we are creating a files folder and that's where we are going to build it. And let's call it uh, lambda to upper zip. So that's what we are going to be generating. Path is extremely simple. We already have that. That's our Lambda to upper project. And the rest we don't need because we are not deploying it. We are just generating code. So that's our prepared deployment package. Extremely easy, as you can see. And then, of course, just the normal step, step of publishing uh, the artifact publish pipeline artifact, which means basically, hey, I want to publish something into our artifacts here. So what are we going to publish? Well, we are going to take whatever we created here. And we are going to give it a name, lambda to upper, and we are going to put it in Azure pipelines. That's about it. So that's our whole CI pipeline. As you can see here, it was completed successfully. So let's run it again. Let's queue and run this from the master branch again. Run and let's see what happens. Hmm. Hmm. Unfortunately, for some reason, it's pretty slow here today, especially the restore part. Uh, 
uh, while we are waiting. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, if you do, I don't hear anything. I guess we're good. Okay. One project restored. With saying it took seven seconds, but a lie. While this is doing, let's review what we are going to do uh, at the next, as our next step. So this was a our build CI part of the pipeline. The next step is the actual deployments. So we have a build or uh, either build or manual trigger which will pull the artifacts that we just created, that zip file, into the stage. And then it's going to do deployments into one stage, second stage, wait for the approval and deploy to production. So we'll de do deployment to development. Deployment to development is basically going to say deploy to Lambda and then test that Lambda. Deploying to staging is going to say deploy to Lambda test Lambda, deploy production, same, deploy Lambda, test Lambda. So pretty simple, I would say. Let's see how where we are at. So we have tests which are run successfully and published results. We have prepared deployment and we have published an artifact. What does that actually mean, published an artifact? Well, if you look at this Summit AWS CI, if you look at this last publish, we will see that we actually have a one published artifact. We actually have this Lambda to upper, Lambda to upper zip file. We could download it. And if you look at how that looks, we will see that we actually have the DLL codes, JSON file. Uh, so this is our deployment package for Lambda. It has all of the necessary uh, libraries for Lambdas and it has our DLL as well. So that's what, our, the, what we prepared, that's our package. So let's create a release for it now. You'll create a new pipeline. And again, we are going to do that from the scratch, starting with an empty job. We'll say we want to add a, an artifact. So it's a summit CSI, CI, latest, alias. And then here it is already saying, uh, telling us we have that Lambda to upper artifact, so we can actually use it. So let's add that. We have stages. This stage, first here we can enable trigger, continuous deployment trigger. So whenever a release, a new build is available, whenever we do a build, it's going to automatically trigger. Here, after release, we have trigger with no conditions. And uh, we have our stage. We are going to call this the development development stage. In order to make things a little bit easier for us, we will also add a variable called environment. And it's going to have a value of, uh, well, in development, it's going to be called dev. That's about it. In the other, it's going to match. This is going to help us name our Lambda functions differently through different tasks. So here we have 
pipeline, we have stages. So how do we set this stage up? Well, we are just going to create a deployment and we will say, what do we need? Well, we need a deploy Lambda function. We need to deploy it. Lambda deploy function. Excellent. Let's do it. Let's try using that one. So what do we have here? Deploy Lambda function. We are using the credentials. We are using the uh, USCIS1 environment. And we will say update and create as necessary. This is our function name. Lambda to upper and let's add the environment. Here is our Lambda name. Function handler is basically what it's gonna, how, how it's gonna call the function, what is the start method of it. And we can get that from the code of the function. It's the DLL, it's the full qualified name of a method. So if we look at that, it should be a DLL, summit AWS dot Lambda to upper, then it should be this class, full qualified name of the class, and the name of the method. Luckily, it already generated that for us right here, so we don't have to worry about that. Put it here, and it is a .NET Core 3.1 function. We are going to use, well, what are we gonna use? We're gonna use our, uh, normal generated artifact. So here it is. That's what we are going to use. And here is the role name or IRN for this Lambda to run under. We have that in the AWS already created. So we'll just put it in here. That's all that we need to do for publishing this Lambda. This is going to publish the code into the environment. And next, we can do a test. There's but a typo uh, in function name you want. The curl I'm checking. Good catch. Thank you very much. As you can see, it's not copy paste anything. It's, it's real. No, uh, I'm not using autotune or anything like that. Okay, so we have Lambda here. We can run a test on it. I'm just going to run a uh, Lambda. I'm not going to run, uh, check it, the result. So it's gonna be Lambda again, Lambda invoke. And uh, let's add a, in this case, PowerShell to make it easier and faster because we only have a couple of minutes left. So I really have to hurry up now. Again, credentials, a region, uh, the name of the function, we can just copy whatever we have here. Payload is going to be a dictionary in JSON form. So that's extremely simple one calling one and not gonna, uh, sorry, not capital one one and that's about it don't and i'm gonna set it up in a output a lambda output output variable okay checking yep and then here in powershell we'll just print that basically we'll say let's print that as a string whatever we got there, Lambda output. Let's confirm the naming here. Lambda output, Lambda output, yeah. So this should be about it. But we should run tests, of course, but no time. Let's save, uh, let's run this pipeline. Pipelines usually run much faster, at least from what I could see. You're going to create a new release, development, create, and here it is, 
running. It's queued. Who is using our agents right now? Deploy Lambda invoke PowerShell. Here we are. And as you can see here, we have a result. I don't know if you can see this. It'd be useful if I kind of if I manage to make it bigger. However, we have deployed Lambda and invoked it in the environment. If you look here in AWS, we will see that now we have a Lambda to upper for dev environment and it's deployed. Our last step is basically saying, OK, that's something that we like. Let's continue and create the other environments. So a release, edit, and so we'll just copy this existing environment twice. We'll call this one staging and the other one, the last one is going to be production. But the last one, differently, is going to have a pre-deployment approvals where we say that anyone in this project, all team in this project can approve this. So that's about it. We'll set up the values for uh, staging and production for the environment and rename this as uh, Summit AWS CD, save, and we can create a release to run again on all four or three environments. That's about it. Now we have a CI CD pipeline that should run on the commit here, and it should build a new package and it should deploy it to development. It should deploy it to sorry, to staging, and then it should wait for approval before it deploys it to production. Any questions now? Can we check these resources in RS there? Uh, Yes, we can check the resources in the AWS, sort of. Uh, we are not using uh, uh, the <coughs> cloud formation for this. It's not going to create a stack. This is just a direct update of Lambda. It can be done through cloud formation. That was what I was planning on showing next. However, we don't have enough time for that. But uh, we can check that we have Lambda here. Uh, we can check. Uh, let me see. Applications in case we are using applications and uh, cloud formation. Uh, we can uh, see that Lambda up to upper staging is now deployed. And we can, of course, run tests, monitor it, uh, do all the stuff that uh, NS already showed. This is just extreme basic part. Staging is done. If we check production, it's saying approval needed. So let's approve that one as well, and that's it. Sorry for going over time, and I really wish we had more time to show these things in details. The second part is really, really interesting as well. It's combining uh, code uh, cloud formation and uh, a API gateway on Lambdas to create an actual deployable web. Okay, thank you very much everyone.